abundant life. John 10, 10. All right, we're going to get the going here. God bless everyone this morning. We thank God for being here one more time to worship and praise his holy name. Uh, today we will be talking about, today's lesson we're going to be your, the abundant life we have in Christ. Now, if you read John 10, 10, you see that Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, uh, before I proceed with the prayer to start with Sister Michelle, can you tell me what the word abundant means? Que tiene mucha abundancia, que no puede, es tanta bendición que no la puedes catar. Se desborda. It, it, it overflows. Overflows. All right? So, uh, let's have Brother Montero uh, pray for the beginning of this uh, Sunday lesson, and then we'll proceed with the abundant life. Alabándote, glorificándote, haciendo tu honor, haciéndote pleitesía, porque te reconocemos como Jehová Dios, el soberano de los cielos, y reconocemos a tu Hijo Jesucristo, nuestro Señor, como el que se dio por cada uno de nosotros en un madero de tormento, para que hoy día nosotros tengamos la oportunidad, Señor, de servirte, de alabarte, de glorificarte, de llegar a tu trono de divina presencia a través de la oración. Por eso, Padre, en este momento queremos presentarte esta iglesia, Señor, para que seas tú, desde los santos cielos, Señor, que la dirijas, que pongas tu Espíritu Santo sobre cada uno de para que todo lo que hagamos aquí llegue a tu trono de divina presencia, Señor. Tú aceptes, Padre de la gloria. Padre, bendice a cada uno de los que estamos aquí. Nuestros pensamientos sean solamente a ti. Y que todo lo que tú envías a través de nuestro hermano Rafa, Señor, por el cual te pedimos salud física, salud espiritual, al igual que le pedimos a toda su familia, Señor, que todo lo que venga, Señor, sea para bendición de cada uno de nosotros. Que lo podamos usar, Señor, no solamente usarlo para nosotros, sino para bendecir a... God bless everyone this morning. Yo les bendiga a todos. Esta mañana vamos a hablar de la vida abundante que Jesús nos dijo que tendríamos cuando venimos a Él. Today we're going to be talking about the abundant life. Uh, it's what Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, that He is, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And you know, every, when you come to Christ... You get overflowing blessings. It never stops. If you look at the universe, you will see that from Genesis 1-1, remember, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That has not stopped. Look into the outer space. There's a lot of black space empty, and the universe is they're still growing. It hasn't stopped. God's words has not stopped. And this applies to our life, too. It doesn't stop. Okay? So, with further ado, let's go to uh, the study. We're going to be talking about the abundant life, okay? John 10.10 10 says, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The only way into eternal life is through faith in Christ as personal Savior, John 3.15. But do not stop here. To have eternal life is great, but there is more. Christ came that you might have life, more abundantly. It has not stopped. It will continue. All believers have life, but not all have abundant life. Uh, Pastor Michelle, can you give us a brief explanation why what that statement says? All believers have life, but not all have abundant life. In other words, they're not going to uh, enjoy the abundant life that Jesus promised. Or the benefits that come with it. Added unto you. So, in other words, when we seek the Lord, we seek first his kingdom and we can't forget the other part, righteousness. Because you got a lot of people that are calling themselves followers of Jesus or Christians and they're seeking the kingdom of God. They want what's in the kingdom, but they don't want to do it God's way. They want to do it they their way. They don't want to pay the price. Exactly. So we have to do it God's way. God have a way of doing things and his ways are right, whether we agree with it or not. But we learn it through the word of God. And as we stay in prayer and, and, and um, 
stay before the Lord. Our desires turn to his desires. Amen. Right. He'll put his desires in your heart. That's right. But it's the will. Your will plays a big part. And also, are you a listener? Do, do you hear what he's saying? Are you willing to change? Some people are not willing to change. They get comfortable with how they're living, with how they want to do things. And a lot of Christians, even though they're making it, they're making it into heaven, they're missing out on a lot of things they could have had on earth here. God, God has already taken care of us. All right. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. Okay. All believers have life, but not all have abundant life. You are living beneath your privilege if you are a believer and not, get this, not enjoying the abundant life. For life to be abundant, it must have abundant resources. And the only unlimited source of life is in the person Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Find that in John 14, 6. To possess this fuller life, the believer, the believer must abide in him. John 15, 1, 5. Dynamic abundant living is not for just a few it is God's norm for all believers. It is spiritual life in death. And without it, the Christian life becomes inane and meaningless. If you do not have abundant life within you, you will soon yield to the carnal flesh life around you. First, read that in 1 Corinthians 3, 1-4. to The carnal life is circumstances control the abundant life the Holy Spirit, the abundant life is Holy Spirit control, excuse me. The carnal Christian life leads to defeat. As you can see, every time you try to do it on your own, it doesn't work. Okay? The abundant life leads to victory in Christ. Man seems to know everything about life except how to live it abundantly. From the moment on, determined not to be satisfied with anything less than God's best, Living life abundantly. Okay, let's go to Romans 10, uh, 6, verse 10 to 13. We're going to be talking about the abundant life is a yielded life. Brother Montero, leame Romano 6, de 10 a 13. Romano 6, de 10 a 13. Gloria a Dios. Por cuanto él murió, murió al pecado de una vez y para siempre. Pero en cuanto vive, vive para Dios. Así también vosotros considerados muertos para el pecado, pero vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús. Por tanto, no reine el pecado en vuestro cuerpo mortal para que no obedezcáis sus lujurias, ni presentéis los miembros de vuestro cuerpo al pecado como instrumento de iniquidad, sino presentados vosotros mismos a Dios como vivos de entre los muertos y vuestros miembros a Dios como instrumentos de justicia. All right, the scripture says, how to live the abundant life is no secret. It is revealed in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Faith that saves identifies you with Christ in his death. This is eternal life. Faith that yields identifies you with Christ in his resurrection. This is abundant life. In four. It is one thing to have eternal life by faith. It is quite another thing to have abundant life by faith. It is one thing for you to be made the righteousness of God in him. Find that in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It is another thing for you to realize his righteous life is in you. And you find that in 1 John 3, 7. It is one thing for you to live in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It is another thing for Christ to live his life through you. Colossians 1.27. In verse 13, the believer has a choice. He may yield into God by faith and enjoy abundant life, or he may yield into sin and endure a defeated life. Revelation 3.1. God will have you know the power of a yielded life if you will live your above circumstances that circumvent abundant living. The abundant life begins when you yield to him as master, allowing him to live his life through you by faith. Okay, that's what the description is of the abundant life is the yielded life. Number two, the abundant life is a service life. Let's go to Romans 12, 1, 2. Mano Montero, leame Romanos 12, 1 al 2. Romanos 12, 1 al 2. 
Por consiguiente, hermanos, os ruego, por la misericordia de Dios, que presentéis vuestros cuerpos como sacrificio vivo y santo, aceptable a Dios, que es vuestro culto racional. Y no os adaptéis a este mundo, sino transformaos mediante la renovación de vuestra mente, para que verifiquéis cuál es la voluntad de Dios y lo que es bueno, aceptable y perfecto. All right. To live abundantly, you must serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself became our example. He served all the way to Calvary. And there he was the obedient servant, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 7 to 8. In Romans 12, 1, 2, the believer is urged to take the necessary steps for abundant living. The beginning. You are to present, this is a volitional surrender to the perfect will of God, even though you may not know God's perfect will for your life. It is on your part, an act of faith. Find that in John 7, 17. You are to present your bodies. God must control and use the whole man. Not just partial, not just little here, little, the whole thing. Your whole man was redeemed on the cross and sanctified or set apart for service. Find that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. You are to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is exemplified in the life of the Apostle Paul. He was a living sacrifice. In life, he was a servant of Jesus Christ, Romans 1.1. 1, 1. In battle, he was a warrior, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. In the will of God, he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ, Ephesians 3.1. These words spoken from a Roman prison, he never referred to himself as a prisoner of Rome. To the apostle, prison was a part of the perfect will of God. Okay? With this conviction, he lived abundantly. See that whatever circumstances you go through, whatever happens in your life, you have to continue living the life. Because that I am what? Come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Don't give up on any of the issues and problems of life because you're going to go ups or downs. Uh, you got to continue on. You're a soldier. You're in the military of heaven. Been drafted, in other words. Now you got to fight, okay? In battle, he was a warrior, Ephesians 6, 10, 18. In the will of God, he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ, Ephesians 3, 1. These words spoken from a Roman prison. He never referred to himself as a prisoner of Rome. To the apostle, prison was a part of the perfect will of God. With this conviction, he lived abundantly, Philippians 1.12. In death, he was victorious, 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8. You have been transformed, changed by the power of God, and no longer conformed to this world. But now you can be conformed to the perfect will of God and live abundantly. And that is called? The abundant life is a service life. Romanos 12, 12, 1. Que cuando leemos el primer texto aquí, ¿eh? que dice que, que nos presentemos nuestros cuerpos de sacrificio vivo, cuando lees el número 2, esa es la contestación al número 1. Porque lo que te está diciendo ahí es que nosotros, en, en, en otras palabras, lo que es decir, que no vivamos en este mundo. Tenemos que vivir en este mundo, pero con una mente completamente limpia. Tenemos, eso, eso es todo lo que tenemos que hacer, es limpiar nuestra mente y sacar de, nuestro, de nuestra mente y de nuestro corazón las cosas que nos perjudican espiritualmente para hablar culto. Be ye transformed, like you said, Romans 12, 1, 2. Be transformed, you have, to, uh, you have to put in your mind that you're going to live the abundant life. Just can't just come on and hang out and just waste your time. You got to commit yourself as a soldier. A soldier is trained to fight a war. A bad, okay? He's constantly training. You are constantly training by getting into the Word, fasting, praying, testifying, preaching, whatever. You are constantly doing those things in order to transform your life into an abundant one. Because the, long, the more you commit yourself to the uh, will of God, the more the Lord will bless you. And the more abundant your life will be. A lot of people don't want to commit themselves either because they're afraid, embarrassed, 
They don't understand one day you will be standing in front of the Lord Jesus Christ and he might be embarrassed of you for not you know, listening to what he told you to do. We are all supposed to do everything Jesus told us to do here on the earth. Uh, sometimes we miss it, but we ask God to forgive our sins and to continue on. But he's giving you all the weapons of your warfare here on the earth. You have to do what he tells you to do in order for you to have that abundant life that he promised each and every one of us. Okay? All right, now let's go to the abundant life. It's a separated life. And let's go to Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Um, Pastor Michelle, can you read Romans 1.1? 1, uh, Romans 1, 1. Hey, Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, Paul to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. What does separated mean to the gospel of Christ? He was set aside for the gospel of Christ, set for a purpose, a mission. Okay, so you're a soldier in the army. The general sends out orders. He said, we, we, the objective today is to take that hill. We've got to take that hill. So what do you do? You pass that information down to the captain, captain down to the sergeant, and sergeant down to the soldiers. Today, we're going to take that hill. So you are separated to do that part, and that part is for you to attack that hill and take it. A soldier in the heavenly army has to do the same thing. He said, tell us to do this, and there's a reason he told you to do this. Because he's trying our faith. One thing is testing us, because we've got to be tested in battle. After all the training, we've got to be tested in battle. When, the, when circumstances happen, problems, then we're going to see how we react to those problems. We don't react to problems without being trained. Because you got to, you know, I'm talking about it in the ministry. You got to know what you're doing in the ministry before you proceed and try to do something that you haven't been trained about. You have to be trained to do that. Go ahead, Pastor Michelle. Reasons for the training is when you train, when, it, when, it, when the training takes place, you do it over and over again. After a while, you don't have to think about it. You just act. So in other words, it becomes a part of you where it becomes a, a, a part where, where you just, you, you automatically re react because you train for it. But if you don't train for something, then you got to think before you do it. But if, you're, but if you're trained and you train your mind, you know, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says, out of the bunches of the, health, the, the mouth, the heart, the, out, out of the bunches of the heart, the mouth How does a believer train? How does a believer train? You train by um, studying the word, Prayer, but also by you studying the word in prayer, you also have to be a doer of the word. The Bible said, just don't be a hearer only, but be a doer. What does and, the Bible tell us that uh, uh, believers in Christ to do here? We are to live the word. We, we are to, to walk in the spirit, not and, in the and flesh. And what do we come to church for? It's, it's training, one, iron sharpen, iron, and we become accountable to each other. And what do we do as soldiers in the heavenly army when we gather at the church? At the church? What do we do? What are we doing here? We're training. We're training, right? Mm -hmm. And we're helping each other out, preparing for what? For the battles, the battles. to come. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't train and you don't help each other, we're supposed to help each other out. Soldiers, help each other. When I was in the army, but I'm telling you, he told you we always have a buddy. He, back, he watch my back, I watch his back. If the enemy try to get rid of him, I get rid of him first. Okay? And same thing like in the, in, in the heavenly army. We gotta do what God tells us to do. We gotta help each other out. Again, we're gonna go through persecution. That's expected. But we we gotta uh, continue on to the bitter end because we know in Revelation 22 who wins in the end. Okay, why are we so scared about doing things if we know who's gonna win at the end? You just gotta prove Jesus did what he had to do. He won the war. We gotta do our battles because we gotta be tested too. Everybody's going to go through, through trials and tribulations. We're all going through trials and tribulations right now, as a matter of fact. But you've got to do your part, and that's by coming and getting trained. What do you train? What do you assemble yourself? Here. Brother Montero, I'm going to have something words that God's going to use him to help me. Pastor Rodman has something something that's going to help Brother Montero, and so on and so on and so on and so on until we help each other out. Then when we go out there, we're ready to face our obstacles. Yes, Pastor Rodman. The more you pray, the more you fast, the more you hang out with the brothers and sisters who are in Christ. 
Así not es, religious es. people. The religious people are not going to save you. Okay? Sí. Believers in Christ who are into the word. Sí. So when you come here to church, it's to praise and worship the Lord and, and get closer to God, not waste time gossiping or whatever. Brother Montero? Porque eh, la vida del cristiano es muy parecida a Because la Because the life of a Christian is just similar to the life of a soldier. Y esa es una de las razones eh, muy importantes. And that's one of the main reasons. Por la que nosotros tenemos que aprender a amarnos unos a otros. Because we got to learn to love one another. Y siempre estar orando uno por los otros. And always praying for one another. Porque de la misma forma que hiciste la comparación de que si ves a alguien que me va a atacar, tú lo atacas primero. Because uh, when I use that comparison with soldiers back in each other's back, you know. Entonces they, nosotros cuando oramos. And then when we pray. Siempre tenemos que estar orando por los otros. We para have to que pray Dios for each other. Los tenga rodeados de ángeles. So God can have his angels around us, y no tengan ninguna clase de problema, ya sea espiritual o ya sea material. And anything that uh, spiritual battle, anything that uh, comes to harm us, uh, he will keep us. Nosotros tenemos que por obligación meternos en las escrituras. We have to study the scriptures. Y, 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 y sacar nuestra mente de todas las cosas de afuera. Sí and tenemos forget que, about all the stuff out there. Sí sabemos que tenemos una familia, sí sabemos que yes, tenemos Yes, we know trabajar, we got families we got to take care of, but... Pero en, en, en ese intervalo que estamos pregando esas cosas, todavía podemos estar... We got to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Tierra. Okay. All right, now. Starvation is both positive and negative. You are to be separated into the gospel of God. This is positive. You, you read that in Romans 1.1. You are to come out for anything that is contrary to the perfect will of God. Read that in 2 Corinthians 6.17. This is negative. To be separate means to be sanctified, set apart for salvation and service. The word of God has the power to separate the believer from sin. Read that in John 17.17. 17, Psalms 119.11. God the Father has the power to separate the believer unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. God the Son has the power to separate the believer unto righteousness, not having spot or wrinkle. Read that in Ephesians 5, 24 to 27. God the Holy Spirit has the power to separate the believer into salvation and service. Find that in 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Without being separated, you can have relationship with God, but you cannot have fellowship with Him. You may be united to Him in Calvary, but separated from Him in sin. Isaiah 59.1.2. Without separation, you can have influence without power, movement without achievement. You may try, but not trust service, but not succeed war, but not win. Without separation unto God from sin, your whole Christian life will be wood, hay, and stubble. In other words, don't be like uh, wasting time like people come to church and start. You have to, you got to come to do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Main thing, he told us, what did he tell us in 2 Timothy 3? Study yourself to what? Why? Because you got to prepare yourself for things that are coming. He again, I, I keep telling people, Look at the world situation. It's getting worse and worse and worse. You better be ready. Come on. Okay? The abundant life is a separated life, okay? Uh, you have to be committed. If you're going to serve God, we're going to serve God, period. No, it's what's about it. No matter what comes out there. Okay? Now, things, people say, don't, don't say negative. Things. This is not negative. Jesus said, the last days, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But you are supposed to get better and better and better at this. Right? Because a lot of people ain't doing it. A lot of people wasting the time coming to church doing religious nonsense. Religious nonsense is going to take you straight to hell. Hell. That's exactly what I said. Hell. A lot of religious people are in hell right now. Because they're not doing what God said for them to do. Alright? And that's to get into the word. You got to go by this. This is the manual. This is life's manual. God gave it to us. Use it. When you go drive a car. You don't get in just stick your key on it. You got you to gotta read the manual to see how the car works. With these buttons for this, that one's for that, that one's for this, that's one for that. You got to read your manual. This is our